Welcome to the next part of our Structural Fire Engineering course here at Stellenbosch University. And now we're going to be looking at how do you design steel structures for fire. And the design of steel structures has had a big influence on structural fire engineering in general because it's one area where you can actually make a lot of difference and save your client a lot of money. Now, I'm standing here on a bridge in the midst of one of our research labs at Stellenbosch and just think about if you were the design engineer on this, what were some of the considerations that you would need to look at? Firstly, I'm standing on a bridge here and this bridge forms part of an evacuation route. So if a fire was to happen, we would want to make sure that this stays in place so that people can get out the building. But then conversely to that, what sort of fire would affect this? Because on the one side I've got large windows, and on my other side I've got a triple story atrium. So even if I had a fire burning below me, the fire wouldn't be able to build up much heat on the structure very easily. It would simply vent out up to the vents at the top or out the side of the building. So the fire exposure of this bridge would actually be be relatively low compared to other things but once again we would need to think about it is an evacuation route we would want to need, keep it safe and if we did need it we would maybe want to protect these beams with a, a intumescent paint paint that swells and provides a protective layer uh, and we could use a boarding system we could use a spray on product and various other options to keep our structure safe but then furthermore when we look at parts of the structure what for instance would we need to do with the steelwork on my left there because that is a gantry crane that serves our laboratory but what happens if that failed in a fire well nothing really it's not critical for life safety it doesn't really matter if we have to repair it after a large destructive fire so when it comes to rational design of a passive protection we would probably just leave that unprotected and save money knowing that yes if it got damaged we would have to repair it. But firstly, just from a rational point of view, it's so high up in the air and far from fuels that it probably wouldn't be, um, be heavily affected and have a severe fire on it. But on the other hand, we've got a column there and the column is carrying evacuation routes below me and above me. So that would be a critical element that we would need to look at to make sure that that was safe, especially if a column is part of a multi-story building. Columns are critical. We need to make sure that they are more than sufficient for the fire severity applied to them. So those are just some of the considerations we have when it comes to steel design. So in the sections that follow, we're going to first be looking at how do we calculate the temperature of steel as it's exposed to fire using various methods, and then how does material get weakened as it heats up, and then finally looking at member capacity of steel beams and columns and other elements at high temperatures. And with that, that gives a good overview of steel and fire. And as I said at the beginning, this is a very important area of structural design, you can make a big impact quite easily if you can apply the principles properly for efficient and economic structural fire design.